Zero Accounting Software 2023 Quote or Estimate and Advanced Customer Payment or Unearned Revenue. Get ready to be an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this or ideally some combination between the two giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive and you're going to need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might want to come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation that being get great guitars duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it right click in the tab up top to duplicate it again we're going to go back to the tab to the middle go to the business drop down i'm sorry accounting drop down so we can open up the balance sheet financial statement report and then go to the tab to the right and the accounting drop down this time the comparative income statement if you don't have a comparative income statement you could just open up the normal income statement we constructed this one in the past to compare the first month and second month january and february february being the current month we're working on at this time on the balance sheet tab we're going to select the drop down and custom date range it to 2023 the end of 2023 and update that report as well so last time we did a uh, prepayment type of situation we're going to do that again simply starting with the estimate this time as we go through the practice problem so let's do a quick look at the flow chart again this is the quickbooks desktop homepage snapshot flow chart which we're just using to see the flow of accounting forms as we go through the process remembering we're down here on the revenue cycle where at the end of the day we expect our checking account to go up for goods and services that we provided. However, the, the number of steps we need to take will be dependent upon the industry we are in. The easiest industry being like a YouTube creator or something where we're just gonna get money deposited into the bank account and we might record revenue at that time. We could also have a cash-based system where we're at a cash register, in which case, we're going to be collecting cash at the same point of time, but we're going to have to record it possibly into a clearing account so that we can then deposit it in the same format as will be shown on the bank statement. So we can do a bank reconciliation. We might have a situation where we have to do the work first and invoice the client, tracking then accounts receivable, receiving the payment, making the deposits. But sometimes 
we might have a situation where we get the money first and we're going backwards. We got the money before we earned the money. Industries where that's common are subscription-based industries, which are classically newspapers, magazines, but now applications, computer applications. And anytime we want a deposit, customer deposit situation, which is our general scenario here, where we are selling a large piece of inventory, we don't have it on hand, someone wants us to order it or something like that, therefore we ask for the customer deposit to lock them into the sale. That means we're getting paid before we do the work. So we should record the money as deposit to the checking account, the other side going to, the other side going to a uh, not revenue yet, but instead a liability account because we owe the money back uh, in essence, or we owe them the work, in our case, the delivery of the guitar. Now notice that when you're looking at other software than zero, sometimes there's an issue with the with the uh the prepayment because if i go back on over here on the the balance sheet the the accounts receivable is the account that usually tracks customer information so if we create a liability account like unearned revenue a lot of software doesn't have that same link to then pull in and track that unearned revenue by customer to later put that credit balance into the invoice whereas zero does have that capacity so if you're following along with other uh, comparative courses like an, like an Excel or a QuickBooks, then we might take some other steps uh, in order to be able to break out the unearned revenue or to track the customer uh, prepayments. But in Zero, they have a nice system. So we're just gonna keep with that system that is being used here. So we're gonna do the same kind of thing we did last time. I'll go to the first tab. We're gonna make it a quote, imagining someone comes in wanting a a guitar and we're going to say okay we'll give you an estimate of how much it'll cost i'm going to start that with a quote so we'll make a quote here and i'm just going to say it's going to be for string music so i'll say it's for string music which we set up in a prior presentation let's say this happened on feb uh 27 feb 27 and <laughs> feb 27 that sounds cool all right and then down here where, what do they want so we're gonna say that they want an ELP. So let's just say ELP. And we're gonna imagine that we have to find that ELP, that specific color or something, or possibly have to order uh, that particular uh, guitar. Actually, let's change it. Let's say that they want a, a different one. It's, a, it's an EPSP, an Epiphone Standard Pro. Let's say they want that one. Okay, so they want that one. And we're gonna say that's that's the estimate if we include the the tax it's being included automatically just like it would on an invoice so we can give them the number that it would cost plus the tax and then if they if they want us to hold on to that guitar as they're going to come into the shop or something like that we're going to say that's great but you're going to have you want to lock it down you want to lock it down because we've had people come look at that i just like five seconds ago someone looked at that guitar i almost sold it like that you're lucky it's still here so you're going to have to give us a down payment. So then we can might request a down payment uh, at this point in time based on uh, this amount, possibly having a standard policy like a 10% or something like that. If that was the case, then we might say, okay, I'm going to save this uh, form and then let's mark it as sent. Let's mark it here as sent. If we were going to email it or, or send it, we could send it, but I'm just going to say mark it as sent for the practice problem purposes. So now if I go into my business dropdown and we take a look at our quotes, we can track this quote as it happens thus far. So here it is, it's in uh, the sent area. And then in the sent area, if it's accepted, I could say they're gonna accept it. So let's say it's accepted. And now it's been pulled into the accepted area and it has not yet, not yet been used to generate an actual invoice with. Now, before we make the invoice with it, we wanna collect the down payment. Now, if you were comparing this to, to uh, another software uh, that we're doing comparative practices to, we might set up an item to help us track the, the, uh, the customer deposit, but we don't need to do that in Zero. So we can just do a, a nice, simple receive money form here and we're gonna say, I'm just gonna take it, 
No, it could go through the clearing account. Let's take it through the clearing account this time just to practice going through the clearing account in case we had multiple uh, collecting of money. So we'll take it to the clearing account this time. That'll match out with other practice problems better than I did before and continue. And so then we're gonna say this is going to be for string music, was it? That we set up, yeah, string music, I think. And the, the point is I'm not gonna make a direct payment, but make it a prepayment. That's what gives me that nice connection. And then I'm gonna say this happened on February, Feb 27, Feb 27. And uh, we're gonna call this a deposit, customer deposit that is. And we're gonna just say it was $100. We're just making a generic 100. And the other side is not going to revenue. We expect to apply it to revenue later when we sell the guitar, but we haven't sold the guitar and therefore it's gonna go into unearned revenue, which we set up last time. Uh, and if you haven't set that up before, it's gonna be a liability account. So it's a liability account because we're getting money, but we haven't done any work. Therefore, we either owe the money back in the future or we owe the work. In our case, the work being the, the giving of the guitar, which we will then do when we make the invoice. So what's this going to do? It's going to be increasing in this time the clearing account for the $100. The other side is going to be then going to what we assigned here, the liability unearned revenue. And Zero has that nice features that it still is able to link out so that we can still track the fact that we have the sub ledger kind of tracking for the customer of string music so we can pull it into the invoice very nicely from an internal bookkeeping perspective so let's save it and close it and check it out and save it we have the green indicating we're go green go everybody knows that green is go so then i'm going to go down and say now we've got the clearing account hundred dollars right there we haven't yet deposited it into the checking account and then the other side is going into our unearned revenue once again unearned revenue just like there, there it is unearned revenue and let's go back on over let's go back on over and so now if i go back on over to the first tab i can also track this information so if i go to the accounting drop down and we saw that we had our our quotes there. Let's do the business drop down. And let's go into our invoices. So on the invoice side of things, we now have uh, this one for string music showing up as a customer credit, which we can then apply out to a future invoice. So that's great because it's actually tracking something that's not in the receivable. It's in the unearned revenue. That's what makes it different than other software that doesn't really often have that uh, that capability we could see it in the awaiting payment over here and then we can see it in the contacts if I go into the all contacts and we go on down to string music string music which is down here don't day uh, stop there it is okay so there there we have it so there's our quote and there is our prepayment so now now let's go to the quotes from here. So let's say that they come into the stores. So let's go our business drop down and let's look at our quotes. And they're saying, hey, I made a quote. And you can imagine them even talking to someone else. And they're like, hey, I made a quote and a down payment. And we're like, okay, I see the down payment. And, I, and here's my uh, quotes. Let's see if we can pull up the quote for you, Mr. String Music. And it's been accepted. I can see that here. So uh, yes. Let's go ahead and make an invoice from this quote for you right here and now. We're gonna go ahead and uh, create the invoice. It's gonna mark it as invoiced once done, moving it from you know this category to that category in our quote area. It'll then create our invoice, string music populated. We're gonna pull it back to Feb 27, Feb 27 for the date. And let's make the due date uh, May, May 27, May 27, let's say, and okay. And then it pulled in uh, the amount perfectly, just like we would expect it to do. What is not being applied out yet is the $100 uh, prepayment that we had here. Now, again, if you're following along with 
like a QuickBooks comparison course, then there we made a we made a nut we have two different methods we used and we used another method to make an item so that we can record it as unearned revenue but we don't really need to do that here because we have this nice uh connection so there we have it so what we're going to do is if i hit approve it's then going to give me the pop-up hopefully that's going to say hey we have this outstanding amount that you can apply to it so i'm going to say okay we're not done yet that's not the end of the transaction we're going to hit the approval and it says it says string music as a hundred dollars in outstanding credit meaning a prepayment that we can apply out to this amount so we're going to say would you like to allocate the credit here we're going to say yes we would and then it even gives us a thing to allocate some of it or all of it which is nice option as well and i'm going to say we're going to allocate all of it out there bring in the balance from 630 down by 100 to 530 and then if we look at our invoice, this is what it looks like now. So now it's even more confusing of a transaction. So this is the invoice that we can actually provide to the client to then collect on the remaining balance of the 530. And it gets confusing to kind of track this because invoices are confusing already with we're inventory, but now we have this added thing. So what happens? Well, accounts receivable is going to go up and this is where it gets tricky. It's going to go up by the 630 but it's also going to go down by the 100 because this 100 is going to be decreasing the amount that that zero nicely put into unearned revenue and is now going to be putting into accounts receivable so accounts receivable is going to go up by the 630 and then down by the 100 credit and the unearned revenue is going to go back down uh, by that 100. the other side is going to go to revenue for uh, the 600 rather than the 630, the difference of the sales tax, which is 5%, the six and the 24 is gonna be a payable account just like normal. And then we're also gonna have inventory go down by an amount not up here, but driven by the item and cost of goods sold is gonna go up the expense account by an amount driven by this item. The net impact on net income will be the revenue here just like normal the 600 not the 530 the 600 revenue minus the the cost of goods sold and the accounts receivable sub ledger will reflect what is still owed meaning it's going to be applying that the amount which is going to be basically the 530 that's still basically owed because it's going to go up by the 630 minus the 100 for that particular client and the inventory will have a sub ledger decreasing in units as well as dollar amounts for the Epiphone Standard Pro. Really neat, really cool. Let's check it out. We're going to go to the balance sheet and we'll say, okay, uh, accounts receivable, A to the R. Here's where the heart of the matter is. The heart of the matter is in here. This is like the chest of the situation because that's where the heart of, of the stuff is in the chest. So we're going to say here it is receivable invoice. The 630 went up by the full amount and it also pulled in this 100, which is coming in from the other side of the unearned revenue for the net being the, the amount that is the net increase to the receivable. Neat, neat, oh, neat, oh. And then if I go to the tab to the right and update over here, we've got the sales, which should be recorded as normal. Uh, not including the decrease of the of the of the uh, prepayment, so it's being recorded by the full amount of the 600, not including the sales tax, and not decreased by the credit. Uh, and then we're also going back to the in, to the balance sheet, the uh, sales tax liability. If we go into that one, that one, that one, then uh, we have this one being impacted by the sales tax liability as normal, not really impacted. It's being calculated based on uh, the sales price as normal, not changing because of the credit. And we have the inventory going down. So the inventory decrease shouldn't be impacted by the credit. It's gonna be going down by the amount that we put in for the item in a perpetual inventory system as normal not the sales price but rather the cost and then the cost of goods sold the expense related to us selling the inventory has increased for that same uh, amount that we decreased the inventory for 
So there we have that. And the impact on net income is the sales price, not, not the amount, uh, the net impact on receivable after the credit, but the full sales price, not including sales tax minus the cost of goods sold. And then if we go back to the balance sheet, the sub ledger for accounts receivable should be tying out still. So I'm gonna go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate the tab. Let's take a look at the sub ledger, breaking out accounts receivable by customer. So we'll go into that one and go into our accounting reports, looking for the sub ledge of accounts receivable down here in payables and receivables, accounts receivable summary. Let's take a peek at that. Uh, and we're gonna say, okay, that's good. So here it is breaking out by customer. Here's the total by customer. And we just did uh, string music here. So which is showing now the 530 uh, due at this point. So there's the total of 2140650 tying out to the balance sheet, 2140650. Also sub ledge for inventory uh, that should tie out to this number, tabbing to the right, right clicking, duplicate. Let's take a look at it too. So we'll see that, don't leave out the inventory. They want some attention. Drop down uh, reports and type in inventory item list. Inventory item list. And so that should be good. We're going to scroll down. Here it is by unit. And here it is by dollar amount. And there's the 5344 that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet at the 5344 MUI B to the end BN. That's good. Tab into the left. And then we can also see if I hit the drop down that the, if I go into the quotes, for example, the quote has now been moved over to invoiced. So it has been invoiced here. Nothing's in the accepted. If I hit the drop down on the business and go into the invoices, then we we can look at uh these are all the invoices the awaiting payments we have string music awaiting payments but it has partially you know been paid which we can kind of see by this yellow dot here the amount due here and uh if we go into the contacts and we look at all contacts and just look at string music scrolling down to string music and we're going to say there we have our information here as well uh invoice partially paid here's our partially paid invoice you can see the amount uh due for everything for this customer up top if i go into that particular invoice then we see the detail the 630 minus the 100 is the 530. so pretty pretty nice pretty and nice pretty nice all right let's go to the Let's go to the tab to the right and open up our trial balance. Go into the uh, accounting dropdown, reports, and then trial balance. Let's type in trial balance here to see to see it just appear like magic when we type stuff in. Typing is magic. We'll hit the dropdown. We're going to go to the custom date range, bring it up to 2023. End of it. Run it. If your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, then uh, it might be a date range issue if you were on last time, but your numbers are off this time. The things that have changed uh, were, so we have a change to this payments, uh, the, the cash clearing account, and we had a change to the accounts receivable. Well, I, I think it went up and then it went back down again, but there was activity in the accounts receivable. And then we had a change to the inventory because we had an invoice that we were dealing with. There was activity that happened in the unearned revenue, although it went up and then back down, I believe to where it was before. There was activity in the sales tax payable account because we sold inventory with the invoice. There was activity in the sales line item because we had an invoice. There was activity in the cost of goods sold. So if, if anything's off, you'd think it might be one of those items. Uh, you could change the date range to see if it's a date range issue. You can drill down to the source document. You can make a change if you need to make a change, possibly to the date that way.